Today's daf we're going to learn is Yivamot Nun Gimel. Um, I will warn you because I got complained from not warning you yesterday. It's again a bit of a complicated page. Um, there's a lot of these. This is the end of the Yibum, Amar, you know, Zika, all the, well, not Zika, but the Amar, Get, doing them in different orders and all that. So this will be our last day of it. We're finishing the fifth chapter, moving on to a topic that's a little bit, a little bit simpler and smoother. Um, I'll remind people the orders for bookmarks are up again. Okay, we gave up, we have we did bookmarks, six bookmarks, one for each Masechet with terms, with a little chart in the back of, you know, checking off your pages. So if you didn't order them the first time, we're doing another printing and um, please put it, place your orders by Monday, the latest, because then we have to know how many to print. So, and then we will be mailing them out. And if you don't get them within a little while, you can ask us. Sometimes the mail, I noticed the mail has been quite unreliable. And please provide all details if you have an apartment number and things like that, because some got returned to us because we didn't have all the details um, of the addresses. So make sure to complete your address correctly. Okay, you can go on the website and on the website, there's a pop-up and that's how you can order them. It'll be up till Monday. Um, okay, there's a, hopefully, Gefet went up in Hebrew, hopefully today it will go up in English, um, otherwise I guess it'll be after the weekend, but sometime in the next day or so there'll be a Gefet, specifically on the issue we learned yesterday about the star, um, about a star for Ma'amal, in general about the Ma'amar, um, some interesting things, even uh, they managed to connect it to Yom HaShoah, um, anyway, it's, uh, it's an interesting topic. And I wanted to just point out one thing that I read incorrectly yesterday. It's very minor, but there was a bright that said Ketzav Ma'amar, and it said Natan la Kesef o Kesef. I use that as a question, like, what do you mean? Isn't it obvious? But no, it's actually describing that's how you do it. Then with the star, it said, why are you asking about a star? Isn't that obvious? Okay, but this part, for some reason, I thought was less obvious. And then they said exactly how you do it with Kesef or Shvei Kesef. Um, okay, so it was just a minor misreading. Just wanted to correct it. And now we're going to start from toward the end of Numbet Amabet. We had a whole section about, um, there's a sheet for today. It's partial. Just has uh, some charts on some of the doc. I didn't get to do a complete one, but has some things that we'll organize. If you notice the first chart on the page has basically, we're going to have six different opinions. Yesterday we started with two, but six different opinions about this machloket between Rebbe and the rabbis. There were basically three opinions. Rebbe Kiva we're putting aside because it's quite clear. If someone did chalitza and then does ma'ama to a woman, okay? So again, we're going to go through a million of these cases today of different orders of doing things. Someone did chalitza and then did ma'ama. The question is, is it relevant or not? So according to Rabbi Akiva, obviously not. Because in Kiddushin Tovsin, B'chai Ve'lavim, as soon as you do chalitza, you're forbidden to marry that yabam, right? It's lo yivne, he didn't build the house, therefore he's not allowed to anymore. So of course, in Kiddushin Tovsin, the question is, what about if you don't hold in Kedushin Tosin, maybe it would be valid. So the, then a different issue comes in, which is, so number one, so now Rebbe said, it depends whether he says, I'm marrying you or I'm doing Ma'amar with you, right? I'm doing it L'Shem Yibum. If he's doing it L'Shem Yibum, it's an irrelevant action because he already did Chalitza. If he's doing it L'Shem Kedushin, regular betrothal, it would work. So now the rabbis say, no, it doesn't work in either case. I'm sorry, it would work in both cases. Okay, because again, Rabbi Akiva says in Kedushin Tovsim, the rabbi said Kedushin Ar Tovsim. So it doesn't matter whether you did it L'Shem Yibum or you did it L'Shem, not Yibum, L'Shem marriage, Kedushin, any which way it works because Kedushin or Tovsim, even though you're not allowed to marry her. So we had two explanations yesterday about why Rebbe thinks it doesn't work if it's Yibum and the rabbis think it does. Because Rabbi Akiva already, we know we don't have to deal with that, that's obvious. So first answer, Rabbi Yosef said, it's like someone who works in the property, right? Does some sort of action like hose the property of a gear that was health care, right? Normally you would acquire it by, you would acquire the land by working the land. However, what's the issue? The issue is that in this case, you were actually working land that you thought was your own because you thought it was your own. That's why I'm in the middle. Of So now, if you have, um, if, he's, if he was working in the land and he thought it was his own land, then it's a total mistake. He wasn't actually trying to, trying to acquire it, so he wouldn't acquire it. So that's the first explanation. Comes a buy and he says, you're comparing it to the wrong case. There he wasn't attempting to acquire anything at all. He was just working in the land. That's not the case that we're talking about. Abaye therefore says, the reason why we say this is 
because it's there's two, right? There's a question, is there one track or are there two tracks? Does Ma'amar only work on top of Zika? And that's Rebbe. And therefore he says, there's no validity to a Ma'amar that you do when there's no Zika already because you did Chalitza, as opposed to the rabbis who say, no, there's Ma'amar, there's Zika. One doesn't work on the other. Therefore, who cares that there's no Zika? There's still Ma'amar. It will be effective. That's what we saw yesterday. We're now going to see four other explanations. Now, each explanation is going to basically kind of build on the last one with a different approach and do what's called a nukimta. Nukimta is when you say this is in a particular case. So Abaye had already done that because Abaye said it's in a case where you said, you said specifically that language and that would only work if there's Zika according to Rebbe. But Rava says, no. Nobody thinks the Ma'amar has to build on a Zika that exists. Everyone would think that if you said that language that Abayah said, it would actually work. So Rav is going to do what we call an ukimta in a different case. He's going to say, no, that bright, I must have been talking about a particular case where you said, not Ma'amar, give me, but Ah, you use the language of with the Zika of the Yivami. Now, now, how are we going to get two opinions then? It seems pretty clear then. You would need Zika. Well, it all depends what you hold about Zika in general. Rebbe Savar Yesh Zika. He holds there is such a thing as Zika, meaning as soon as she falls to to this person, they're integrally connected, Rebbe. In which case, Ate Chalitza, Afkate Zika. The Chalitza came and disconnected them. So therefore, when he said, Mama Yivmi, uh, Zika Yivmi, it was totally irrelevant because what does Zika have to do with anything? Rabbanan Savre and Zika. The rabbis say, there's no such thing as Zika. And therefore, well, now, if you say Zika Yivmim, it obviously isn't working on the actual Zika because there is no such actual Zika. The two of you are not integrally connected. Yes, it's true. You're supposed to do Yibam with her, but that doesn't mean you have any connection right now until you actually do an action, right? Like if you actually perform Yibam, if you don't, well, you were never connected before and your chalitza doesn't really change anything because you weren't connected anyway. It just fulfills your mitzvah, but it doesn't have anything. You, you're, you're, the nature of your relationship is no different than it was before. It's just that you've now fulfilled your mitzvah of yibum by doing chalitza. So if that's the case, now, normally, if you say zikat yivmim, it actually works. Whether or not you hold yesh zika or not, that's a language that works. So comes the rabbis and they say, wouldn't it have worked before when there was no zika? So obviously then it'll work now also, Hashtanami Mahani. Since nothing changed in terms of your Zika before you had no Zika, now you have no Zika. And yet if you had said Zika Yivmim in the beginning before you did Chalitza, it would have worked. So therefore now it should work as well. That's Rav. Third, fourth explanation, Rav Shreb Yama. Bechalitza Kshera, if he did Chalitza first, which is what we thought the case was, right? Because it said, Chal Cholitz Li'ivim Tov Chazar So if you did Chalitza as your first action, which we thought the case was in a minute, we're going to see it's not. Every, I'm sorry, I skipped a line. Everybody agrees that Zikat Yivmim won't work. Why? Because Zikat Yivmim can only work on, now this would assume everybody holds Yesh Zika. And at this point, you did a Chalitza. The Chalitza was what we call a Chalitza Ksheha. It was a very strong Chalitza because nothing preceded it. So you did your Chalitza and now you're disconnected. So you can't possibly do Zikat Yivmim according to everybody. So what's his ukimta? So he's going to say, He's right. Everyone agrees it doesn't work. Even though the case was, it means if you did Chalitza to your Vama and then Ma'ama, after you actually, let's say, gave her a get in the beginning. Okay? So you did your Chalitza after you already started severing the ties. Remember we said a Chalitza that comes after a get is a much weaker Chalitza and it doesn't totally remove the Zika, that's going to be the machloketem. Mar savar chalitza psula ena poteret, umar savar chalitza psula ena poteret. One is going to say the chalitza psula entirely disconnects you. If so, right, once it disconnects you, that's Rebbe. Rebbe's going to say, well, then you can't do any sort of ma'amal. And the, the rabbi say, chalitza psula ena poteret. It's a weakened chalitza. It doesn't exempt her entirely. There is still some zika there. So when he says, it would actually work. Okay, so that's the difference between them. Rav Ashi Omer, dekule alma chalitza psula ena poteret. Nobody thinks that a weakened chalitza exempts her. 
Okay. And therefore, they would both agree in that case that it would actually be a valid ma'amar after. But ha'cha b'yesh t'nai b'chalitza askina. This is very interesting. This is a case where he, get, now let me go back to marriage and divorce. There's many cases we're going to learn this in Kedush and Giti, where somebody gives betrothes a woman or gives her a divorce upon condition. This will be your get if I show up in 30 days. This will be your get if I give you this amount of money. This will be your condition if something happens. Now, what if he said that I'm doing chalitza to you under condition that I give you 200 zoos, I don't know. And then once I give you the money, the chalitza will be valid. So the question is, let's say he didn't fulfill the t'nai. He didn't fulfill the stipulation. So do we say there's t'nai in chalitza, you can do a stipulation, in which case the chalitza is not valid until you actually fulfill the t'nai, right? What we're gonna say is the ukimta this time is, it was a case where you did chalitza upon condition. The condition wasn't fulfilled and then you did ma'amar. So if you say yesh tonight be chalitza, then you're going to say there is a condition. This condition wasn't filled, fulfilled. So there's no chalitza yet. Until the condition is fulfilled, there's no chalitza. So it was ma'amar, of course, is valid. That's the rabbis. According to Rebbe, ain't tonight be chalitza. There is no such thing as a tonight, which means your chalitza is valid right now. If your chalitza is valid, there's no validity of the ma'amar. You would do after that. And finally, Ravina Amar de Kuleama Yesh Tnai Bechalitza. Everybody agrees you can stipulate. But Hacha Betnai Kaful, can we forget? The Machloket is do you need to have a Tnai Kaful? What's a Tnai Kaful? A doubled. That means, and this is learned out from, and this comes up, we'll get to this later, also when we talk about conditions and all sorts of things. The Tnai learned out is the Tnai in the Torah of the Ruven God and Chatzishevet Menashe, who didn't want to go into the land and they made a Tnai with Moshe. If we go and we fight with you, then we'll get the land. And if we don't, then we won't get the land that we want. That, it's not a full of saying, if we do and if we don't. What will happen if we do? What will happen if we don't? Even though you can obviously infer the what will happen if you don't. But if you don't stipulate it, some people hold that's not a proper tonight. It has to be a tonight like the tonight in the Torah, which was a tonight kaful. So therefore, this was a tonight that wasn't kaful. You only said, if we do this, right? It, this will be your chalitza if I give you the money, but you didn't say, and if I don't give you the money, this won't be chalitza. So now, if you say a t'nai, you don't need a t'nai kaful, then the t'nai was effective, that's ready. And then if you do ma'amar, it's irrelevant. According to the rabbis, you need a t'nai kaful, this wasn't a valid t'nai, which means your chalitza was chalitza without the condition, and it's already, sorry, did I say it the opposite? If you, I think I just got confused for a second, let me just go through it again. Um, right, so let's just read it. Mar savar be'inan t'nai kaful. You need a t'nai kaful. If you need a t'nai kaful and this wasn't, then this wasn't chalitza, then what you do will be valid. That's the rabbis. And mar savar rebi holds lo be'inan t'nai kaful. You don't need a double language. And therefore, your chalitza was a chalitza and that way your ma'amar is not a ma'amar. Okay, that was a bit confusing, but six different ukimtas as to what the debate between rebi and the rabbis was. Now we're going to go one by one by cases in the Mishnah, and we're going to have a few types of issues. One issue is going to be something we brought up at the time, which is the Mishnah brought cases where it said if you start with Chalitza and then it doesn't matter, but remember, we have these four things, Ma'amal, Get, Chalitza, and Bia. So now, if you did Chalitza first, it doesn't matter what you do after, it's all irrelevant because you've already done Chalitza. If you did be'ila first, you had intercourse first, and that was the kiyom of your yibum, then again, nothing after is valid. Except that the language of the Mishnah didn't match that. The Mishnah said, Ein achar chalitza klum. After it brought both those cases, it should have said, Ein achar chalitza klum and Ein achar be'ila klum, but it didn't say that. So that's the first question the Gemara is going to ask. Then when we get to the next one, I'll talk about the next style of questions. And by the way, this section is repeated twice in the Mishnah. So this section of the Gemara is going to be repeated twice as well. As they slowly go through each part of the Mishnah, they're going to, in a few minutes, get back to this exact same thing when it was quoted the second time in the Mishnah and ask the exact same question and give the exact same answers. We're going to have two answers to this question. Why didn't it say there's nothing after Bi'ah? Again, Bi'ah and Bi'ilah are synonymous. You should actually add those words. It's a mistake. The Mishnah should have included those words. Vitana didan. So what about the fact that in our Mishnah, it doesn't appear? 
This goes back to a mechlok at Abishawal and the rabbis, are we better off doing chalitza or better off doing yibum? Abishawal said better off doing chalitza. And because he said, but I hope I'm not confusing who said it, but I think it was Abishawal who said that it was better to do chalitza. And therefore, they, they wanted to mention one of them, they mentioned chalitza. Because they wanted people to know better to do chalitza than to do beyond. That's why they mentioned it. Now we're going to go through a whole slew of cases and we're going to try to say this Mishnah, okay, we're going to connect it either to a Tanaitic opinion and say it doesn't follow this Tana's opinion or bring some statements some Amora said and say, oh, maybe our Mishnah can support that statement. Okay, every time we're going to say maybe it can support, they're going to reject it. But first they're going to say, okay, now we're talking about that we just said, but if you start with Mahamar or you start with get, then things you do after will be affected. So they say it doesn't matter whether it's one Yivama, okay, or two Yivamot with one Yabam, okay? It doesn't matter whether it's two Yivamim doing the same thing to one Yivama or one Yivama with, or two Yivamot with one brother, right? One brother doing one to one woman and then to the next woman doing a different action. So now they say, so this means basically, again, it's a little bit confusing the wording. What it means is, for example, if you did ma'amar, I'm going to give the case they're going to say in a minute, if you did ma'amar and to one wife, one sister, um, one of the wives of your brother, then you did ma'amar to the next one, that would be effective because after ma'amar, other actions you do are still effective because you didn't do a complete disconnect from the woman or a complete connect to the woman. So this Mishnah must hold, not hold by Ben Azai. The Tanya Ben Azai Omer, Yesh Ma'amar Achar Ma'amar B'Shnei Yivamim B'Yivam Achat. Ve'ein Ma'amar Achar Ma'amar B'Shnei Yivamot B'Yivam Achat. He held a, an in-between position. He said, if you have two brothers and they each do Ma'amar to one woman, each has the right, so to speak, to do Ma'amar, so each one will be affected. But if it's one Yabam and he does Ma'amar to one and then he does Ma'amar to one other, he doesn't have the rights to do Ma'amar to two, so the second one will be invalid. So that doesn't apply to our Mishnah because our Mishnah said whether it's Yivama Achav or Shnei Yivamim, it would be the same thing. Or, or Shnei Yivamim V'Yabam Achat. So therefore, that doesn't hold by Ben Azim. Next. Ketzad Ma'amar Lizo. Okay, now what did it say? Ma'amar Lizo V'chalat Lizo. The way we understood it was he did Ma'amar to the first woman. Or actually, we were talking in this case about one woman. Right, Yabam Achad and Yivama Achad. First, he does Ma'am. No, actually, the Gemara is going to be talking specifically about um, one second. Yeah, about two Yivamot here. He did Ma'amar to the first one, and then he and then he did Chalitza to the second. Now, what do we know from this? Chalitza worked on the Yibum on the second one, but the first one he did Ma'amar with, he's going to have to give her a get now. So now the Gemara is going to read this a little bit differently. They're going to read it as Ma'amar Lizo. Vicholetz lizo as a command. If you did ma'amar to one, you have to do chalitza to the second. Okay. Why they do this, I don't know. Because in a minute they're going to say you're misreading the Mishnah, and that's not the way we read the Mishnah. But right now they're going to read the Mishnah like that. Now that's going to say lema maseya le l'shmua. Tamar shmuel chalatz the balat ma'amar lo nifterat sarata. This is a case. If you remember, Shmuel said if you did ma'amal to one. And then you end up doing chalitza to her. That's again what we call, we're going to keep hearing this term over and over, chalitza psula. It's a weakened chalitza. If it's weakened, comes Shmuel and he says, you now, lo nifterat sarata. That means if I, if the man did ma'amar to one woman and then he does chalitza to her, that's a weakened chalitza. It means he has to do ma'amar to the other wife as well. It's not enough to exclude. She needs chalitza because that chalitza wasn't a strong enough chalitza to get rid of her zika. It got rid of the zika of the one woman he gave chalitza to, but not the other. So now they're going to say, ah, the fact that it says ma'amar lizo and chalitz lizo, you have to do chalitza to the other woman, sounds like Shmuel. Shmuel saying, since it's a weakened chalitza, you're going to have to do, what he's really saying is, right, according to Shmuel, you would have to do chalitza to both. And that's how they're reading the mission. It's not enough to just do chalitza the first one. You're going to have to do it to the second and it's a tiyuv to Rav Yosef. So number one, it would support Shmuel. Number two, it does something else, which is it basically means that you're now going to have to mess up the second woman, right? She's going to be, you know, remember what, remember what Rav Yosef said. Rav Yosef was the guy who said, don't throw out the water. Someone else might need it. Remember? So 
Here, you're basically messing up the second woman and the first woman. Because the first woman you did ma'amar to, you're going to need to give her a get. She's going to be a grusha, won't be able to marry a coin. Now you have to do chalitza to the second woman, right? That seems to be a problem. The truth is, I think the way they're reading it is chalitza ba'ala ma'amar, lo nifto, right? I guess, yeah, I guess they're saying it may be do chalitza to the second one. I guess they were somehow reading again. In the end, they're reading it wrong. So it doesn't bother me so much, but it seems like they're saying you would have to do chalitza to both, but then also seems to be Rav Yosef would seem to say, just do to the one who's already messed up. So now the Gemara says, no, mi katani cholet, chalat katani diavad. They're talking about if this was the scenario that he happened to do ma'amar to one and then chalats to the other. Not that we should, we're telling you go do chalitza to the second one. Nobody's telling him that. This is just, if this were to have been the case, this is what you're supposed to do. And that goes back to the way we understood it in the first place. Okay, we're going to have a few like this. Get Lizzo, we get Lizzo. Okay, so if he gives a get to one and he gives a get to the other, what did it say? Srichot hemenu chalitza. They, now, srichot is plural. It sounds like they both need chalitza. So we're going to say, now, lema se'ale l'rabba barafuna. Da'ama rabba barafuna. Chalitza psula, srichha l'chazer al kol ha'achim. Right? If, if one gave a get and another gave a get, let's say we're in the case of two yivamim and one yivama, because remember, these are all true for all the cases. Now, if one gave a get, according to Rabbi Barav Huna, if one gave a get and then he did chalitza, the other one would have to do chalitza also, because again, it's a weak in chalitza. She's not disconnected from all the brothers. So the fact that it says, chalitza, they both need chalitza, or it would sound like also she needs chalitza from all the brothers, this seems to be matching that opinion, right? That she needs to get from all the brothers. So they say, no, my srichot, srichot alma, srichot means they need it, meaning one of them needs, right? It needs one chalitza. It doesn't mean it, they all need chalitza or they need chalitza from all the brothers. No, it's just using it in a general term. Get lizzo v'chalatz lizzo. Again, we're going to have another one like the first question. Ein achar chalitza klum. If you give get and then you do chalitza, you don't, well, again, we're going to read this as get lizzo, cholitz lizzo. You have to do chalitza to the second one. So again, we're going to say, lema masei alei l'shmua, v'tavit yufte derav, Yosef. Right, again, this seems to support Shmuel that all, the second one's going to need chalitza because it's a weak in chalitza. And against Rav Yosef, who says, don't mess up someone who's not messed up to a Kohen, right? Make sure to give the chalitza to the, to the one who already, you know, has a get. So again, they say, no. Miktani cholet, chalas katani diava. No. This was just a scenario that happened, not that we're telling you this is what you should do. And again, again, they're learning it all from the language. It's like chalat, it doesn't say cholet. Obviously, you know, with vowels, you could have a dot without a vav, and chalatz could be read as cholet, so you could see why maybe there was confusion. Chalatz be chalatz, o chalatz, okay, this is, if you did chalitza, and then you did anything after chalitza, again, enachar chalitza klum, this is the second time this is mentioned in the Mishnah. Belit nami enachar biaklum, right, since it brought, this is just a repeat of the question we saw before, since it brought chalitza and it brought bi'ila, and it basically said there's nothing after either of those actions, because one, right, they both fulfill the mitzvah v'yibum in a different manner. So again, belit nami enachar biaklum, why doesn't it say enachar chalitza klum and enachar biaklum? So again, abai v'rav adam retravayu today, enachar biaklum, really add those words, v'tana didan, Artana hatarat yivamal shuk adifale, right? Better off mentioning hatarat yivamal shuk because we'd rather free her and let her marry whoever she wants rather than having the brother do yibum. That's the idea. Again, we've seen different approaches about this, whether yibum is the ideal or whether chalitza is the ideal. Right? It's it's just in, in, in perspective, you know, especially since the stuff is very, very detail-oriented, it's sometimes good to step back, right? This whole yibum chalitza, right? There's all these different machlokot that pervade this, the Masechet. So, you know, there's yesh zika, ein zika, two total different approaches to this whole thing. Are they integrally connected before you do anything or are they not? That's one basic machlokot. Another basic machlokot is what's better? Is it better? <coughs> is it better to do chalitza or is it better to do yibum? That's also a big machlokot that pervades, right? It's always going throughout this different approaches, right? Waffling back. Okay. Bein yabam achad so now we're going to get back to a different machlok. This is also good. It's repeating all sorts of machlok we've seen. Once someone does chalitza, okay? One of the brothers. Let's say we have a number of brothers. One brother does chalitza. We had a whole big machlok of Rabbi Yochanan Mishlakish. Okay, before we even get to the machlok. Once he does chalitza, isur lo yivne. He is not allowed to marry this woman ever. 
right? It's Isur Lav. Remember Isur Lav? Rabbi Akiva will say in Kedushin Tovsin, but everybody else thinks if he goes ahead and marries her anyway, it will be a valid marriage, just he shouldn't do it. Now, then we have this big machlok at what's her status with the other brothers? Remember, if there's five brothers and one did Chalitza, so he's not allowed to marry her, what about the other brothers? Now, everyone agrees the other brothers can't marry her. The question is why? Some people say, Lo Yivne, this is um, Rabbi Yochanan, Lo Yivne applies equally to all the brothers, to all the other brothers, are Lo Tase. Rish Lakish says, no, all the uh, no, nobody thinks the brothers can marry her, but Rish Lakish says all the other brothers revert back to the status before Yibum, which is Eshet Ach, Isor Kare, serious, much more serious than Isor Lav. He says all the other brothers are Isor Kare. So comes the Gemara and says the following. It says in the Mishnah, Bein Yabam Echad Vamot. So now, Bishlamala Rabbi Yochanan. We're now going to get to, okay, if we talk about the types of questions we had. Number one, why wasn't Be'ila mentioned in that Enachar Be'ila Klum? That was one type of question. Second type of question was, or issue was, can we match this to some opinion? Not match it. Can we use it as a support for this opinion? Right? Can we say it doesn't fit with this opinion? That was another approach. This is also kind of like that, where it's going to say it doesn't really fit, but we're going to get to another type, which is be- because according to some opinion, it would be totally unnecessary to say this. We're going to have a bunch of statements that seem unnecessary in the Mishnah. And then we're going to answer them in the end by saying, which you can relate in this Mishnah, this Mishnah gave all the possible different permutations, right? Both get, ma'amar, bi'a, and right, you could do a mathematical equation, right? How many possibilities are there of the four of these and in what order and all that? Number one, that, and then in all the permutations of yabam achat, yabam achat, two yabam achat, one yabam achat, two yabam achat, right? all the different possibilities. So it's almost a funny question that they're going to say, well, this case is unnecessary in this particular instance, because they're basically saying, well, we get, right, we're basically just describing all the permutations. So you don't really, the question, this seems unnecessary in the Mishnah is not really a question because everything was kind of mentioned because of something else. Okay. Once you were saying this, well, we say that as well. So Bishlamala Rabbi Yochanan, Tamar Kula Beta Belavkai, Eat Strich Lashmuina, the Inkidushin Tosin, Bachai Velavim. We're now talking about Einachar Chalitza Klum. Okay, or Anachar Be'ila Klum. This is because, right, Anachar Chalitza Klum would be, actually, that's the case we're talking about. When you say there's nothing after Chalitza, this is why, because, now, if you're Rabbi Yochanan, it's because all the other brothers are beloved, right? And then you would think, since En Kedushin Tovsin B'chai Ve'lavim, I'm sorry, since you, sorry, my mistake. Remember, the whole mission is based on En Kedushin Tovsin B'chai Ve'lavim. Remember, we said the Mishnah follows Rabbi Akiva. Now, but you might have thought, in other words, you need the Mishnah to tell you that, because otherwise you would have thought, mostly we think, Enkidushin Tovsim. So, Isrich Lashmina de Enkidushin Tovsim, Bechai Velavim, right? It's to tell us, you would have thought, sorry, I, I said it a little bit confused, I got confused in my head. Normally, most people hold Kidushin Ar Tovsim and Chai Velavim. So, that would mean if you did Chalitza and then one of the other brothers married her, you would think. It would be a valid marriage if you're Rabbi Yochanan, because Rabbi Yochanan says all the brothers are chai ve'lavi, which would mean the marriage would be valid. That would mean Khalitza and Ma'amar, the Ma'amar would be valid. So the Mishnah has to tell you, no, we hold en Kedushin Tovsim, we hold like Rabbi Akiva, right? That one opinion that it's not a valid marriage. And that's why after Khalitza, nothing is valid. Even a marriage, right? A, a Ma'amar would be an invalid action. But the Rabbi Akiva, I'm sorry, Ela Levish Lakish, if you hold that it all goes back to Eshara, which is what, right? Then in Yab, right? Whether it's, if it's two Yivamim, then of course everyone would agree according to Rish Lakish, in Kedushin Tovsim, because it's Chai Vekari. Now it's true this Rabbi Yoshua, but nobody seems to be bothered by Rabbi Yoshua's opinion. But both Rabbi Akiva and, um, why am I blanking on who says, Kiddushin or Tovsin, right? And Kiddushin Tovsin, Bechai Velavim. But they wanted to write, so according to him, Yitzrich Lashmuina, the En Kiddushin Tovsin, Bechai Vekritu, there's no point. It would be an irrelevant case. You wouldn't need to bring us this case, that En Achar Chalitza Klum, also when there's Shnei Vamim, because that's obvious that there's no relevance to Ma'amar. So Amar Lecha Rish Lakish. Rish Lakish is going to say, oh, you think this is irrelevant? I'll tell you something else that's irrelevant. And obviously it's brought there because of that. Therefore, my thing is brought there because of that. Okay, so right, the the current had a good word for it. They said stylistically, right? It's a stylistic thing. 
אמר לך ויש סקיש, ולהתאמן, ספר דקטני בעל ועשה מאמר, איסטריך להשמינה, אוקיי, this is a really ridiculous case that you would need to say, if you did בעילה, and then you did מאמר, she's already married, right? Nobody would think that if someone does ma'amar, right, the other brother comes along and does ma'amar after you already did the ilah and you married her. Of course, everybody knows if you go marry a married woman, there's no relevance to your action. So therefore, okay, basically, once they were doing this case, they said that case, once they were doing that case, they mentioned that case, and okay. Next, same type of question here. Chalatz v'asama amar v'natan, get, okay, or, or anything, right? Chalitza first and then anything else. Now, this case, Rashi tells us, in case we didn't know, because it's confusing when you get to all these things, you don't know what, what case they're talking about. Rashi says, we're talking now about one yavam and one yavama, okay, where he does the same thing to the same person twice, right? Or he does two actions to the same person. Bishlama chalatz v'asama amar itzduch. If it's first chalitza, now you have to remember the basic of the, okay, the basis of this is the confusing part of today's stuff. If before it wasn't, this is the really confusing part. Now, the way to remember this always is ma'amar, we're always think, confu- we're going to say, we're going to do this for ma'amar because we don't want you to confuse it with bia, because those are two where you're positively connecting to her as opposed to disconnecting, right? We're going to always connect get and chalitza, right? That, that one, you might think, make a zera on one because of the other. So, Bishlama, the truth is this part is less so that, okay? But the next part is going to be more that. Bishlama chalatz v'asama amar itzricha. Why do they need to tell us if he does chalitza to her and then he does ma'amar to her? You really don't need that. Obviously, you did chalitza, ma'amar has no relevance. But you might have thought, salkadatach nigzor ma'amar de batar chalitza ata ma'amar de kame chalitza. Now, this isn't what I said a minute ago. This is, I forget, this is something else. This is, you might worry if we switch the order, remember the first case of the Mishnah, you did Ma'amar, and then you did Chalitza, you have to give a get to the Ma'amar, the Ma'amar is valid. So we might say that Ma'amar after Chalitza is forbidden, because is going to be real, an action that you're going to need to get from, so that you don't confuse and think the Ma'amar before Chalitza would be irrelevant, and that would be a problem because it is relevant. So you might have thought that, but that's why they need to come and tell you, no, no, no. We don't think you're going to confuse those two things. That's why, again, we're trying to say why is this necessary to say. That's why you would need to say this. But chalatz v'natan get lamali. But no one's going to think that a get is a valid action after a chalitza. Why? What's well, obvious. Get is only when you're married. Now, we already said that there was a big chiddush to say there's get when you're supposed to do yibum, right? And that's because maybe there's zika, right? And there's some connection. So get could have some validity. Once you did chalitza and you disconnected with this woman entirely, nobody would ever think that a get would be a valid action. You're not married. You're not connected through you, but nothing. So that's a weird case, right? Why? No, it's not a weird case. It's just why would the mission need to say it? So again, they're going to say, well, if you think that's a question, I'll tell you some other unnecessary things. If you had relations with her and then you gave a get again, you fulfilled you, and then you gave a get. That you need to know that that get is irrelevant. Sag, right, again, this would be, I guess, for a different woman, right? Chalas, um, Ba'al v'natan get, gita. Ah, right, the point is here that you don't need chalitza, that you fulfilled your yibum requirement, okay? And you don't need chalitza. So, right, if you gave a get, you might've thought, oh, you gave a get, but you didn't do chalitza, right? This is the whole one that you might've thought that to undo a yibum relationship, you might need chalitza down the road. The point here is get is valid. Why would you need that? Salkadata chamina nigs or get to batar be'ila atu get to kame be'ila. Remember, if you give a get before, you're going to need chalitza. You do get, right? You're going to need chalitza because if you do get, and then you do be'ila, right? The be'ila is not a fulfillment, right? You're going to need chalitza. It's the only way to get out of it. So from here, you might have thought you do get after Bila because of get before Bila. No, you don't need it. Ava, and that's why Baal Vasa get, the get is irrelevant. Okay? Now, Aval Baal Vasama Amar Lamali. So now they say, but what's the case that you really don't need to have said here? In other words, again, we're trying to answer why they gave that case. You're going to say, well, if you're going to ask why they gave that case, you're going to ask why they gave this case. And in the end, you're going to say it's just stylistic. Why would you need, like, think about it again, 
right? This is like the, the flip or the, the comparison, the analogy of chalatz and gave a get. We're already did chalitza. Of course, get is irrelevant. Ba'al v'asam ma'amar, you're already married to her. You already did yibum. What is a ma'amar going to do to a woman you're already married to, right? Lama ela I did tani chalatz v'asam ma'amar, tani nami ba'al v'asam ma'amar, ba'ayi divay l'mitne ba'al v'natan get, tani nami chalatz v'natan get, okay? They're basically just saying, in other words, we're just giving you all the permutations, even though a bunch of them are totally irrelevant. And it's not irrelevant. You just don't need to say it. It's totally obvious. Now, bizman shehi. Okay, now we get to the end of the Mishnah, which said, there were two opinions. There was, if be'ila, if chalitza, it doesn't matter if it's at any point, right? Chalitza will disconnect you from this woman. And that opinion is basically saying, even though it's a chalitza psula, remember? Even though some people think chalitza psula doesn't totally disconnect you. Tanakam is saying chalitza psula disconnects you entirely. But be'ila, the Tanakam had said, Bem, right, betchila, if that's the first action you do. But if it's later in the middle or at the end, meaning you did a get or ma'amar before, your bi'ila, your bi'ila is not going to be, it's not going to be the end game, right? There's things that could happen after that. Rabbi Nechemia said, no, bi'ila and, and uh, chalitza, it doesn't matter. Middle, beginning, end, they are the final action. Basically, it's saying bi'apsula and chalitza apsula, even though they're weakened, they finish Right? They finish things, there's nothing relevant after. So now we're going to see that Matnit in Deloki Haitana, there's a third opinion. He has a third position. Okay, so we have all three permutations, right? He's now going to say both of them only work if they're first. He's going to hold Bia and, and Chalitza Psula are weak and they don't resolve everything. Okay, so now we're going to explain the three opinions. Bishalosh machlo kopadava. Tanakama sava. Bi'a di'ika la migzar gazrina. Okay, now this goes back to stuff we've seen earlier. Okay, it's again, it's always a little bit confusing, this whole thing, but this is the last hard part of today's stuff. So, bi'a psula, this is why I said you have to remember to interchange the get and the chalitza. You do bi'ila, and then right after a get, so we're going to be goes there. Why are we going to say this isn't good? Right? Even though theoretically you did, right? Your get isn't so relevant. You did be Eli. You should be Yibum. That's good. But they say no. Because of if you do, we're going to compete, right? If you replace get with Chalitza, people might think that get is like Chalitza and that you could do be Eli after Chalitza. And of course you can't do that. So that's, there's a reason like so. So therefore, we're going to say like this. Um, let's read it inside. Tanakama Saba. Bi'a de'ika l'migzar gazrina. So they say, by bi'a, we're going to say in the middle, it's no good. But chalitza, de'leka l'migzar lo gazrina. But chalitza, we don't care. Because worst case, you'll do chalitza and then another chalitza, you know, like chalitza after get. So you'll say, oh, chalitza after chalitza, someone will do. So what? They did chalitza after chalitza. What about chalitza after ma'amal? You might confuse chalitza after bi'a. Well, Right, they say in the end, if you do ma'amar, you're going to need again. And if you do bi'ila, you're going to need again. So it's all the same. There's no difference. There's no reason to make a say. That was all at the end of Nun Amud If you want to learn that again, Rabbi Nachemia Savar, and that's why chalitza he says is the end game because there's no reason to make a say. Bia is not the end game because there's a reason to think people will get confused. Rabbi Nachemia again, it's the app. It's in the middle. It's not going to work. Rabbi Nachemia Savar. Now remember, he says, doesn't matter, middle, end, either of them, it's all going to be effective. Why? He says, there's no reason. No one's going to confuse that, he says. Everybody knows the chalitza is the way. It says it in the Torah explicitly. This is the way to fulfill Yibam. No one's going to think that you could do Bila after that. It's Doraita. So don't worry about confusing. And that's the whole concept of Replace get and chalitza and say, oh, get is like chalitza. No, get is durabanan, because again, get when you're married is doraita, but get when you're yibum is just durabanan. There's no such thing. So, no reason to make exam. Everybody knows the difference. Utikamarta ligs or bia achar get, mishum bia achar chalitza. No, I said that already. Utikamarta ligs or bia achar ma'amal, mishum bia achar bia. And if you're going to say, make exam on bia after ma'amar, because of bia after bia, again, Everyone knows it's still right. A bia is yibum. Nobody's going to confuse that. And therefore think, what's the biachar? That you could do bia to the second wife 
Nobody's going to think that. Okay, so therefore, he doesn't think there's any problem with Yibam in the middle. But he holds there's a problem in both cases. So what? He's going to build on Tanakam. Remember, Tanakama said, there's the only reason for concern by Bia, there's no concern for Chalitza. So it comes when he says, I agree with you, there's no concern for Chalitza, but I'm going to add a new concern, which is what? Savala Kirabana de Gazre Bibia. And he agrees with Tanakama that Bia, there's an issue. Because of Chalitza, Mishum Bia. And well, once you said Bia in the middle is a problem, we're now going to say Chalitza in the middle is a problem as well, just because of Bia, so that you don't mess up Bia and think that that's okay. So therefore, he basically says, only if it's your first action is it complete. If it's in the middle, it's not complete. And there's validity to actions that happen after. And with that, Hajjan al Rabban Gabriel, and I will say this incredibly confusing chapter. Okay, now we're getting to a, a nicer, or I don't know, nicer. Well, you'll see, this is a bit of a strange figure we're going to end with. But a more simple thing, and, and why do I like it? Because it's a concept that comes up in other Masechot as well. It's a very famous in Baba Kama. There's a Dam Muad Olam. People are always responsible for their actions. Favorite Mishnayot. Bain ba ones, bain ba shogay, bain ba, uh, sorry, bain ba shogay, bain ba mezi, bain ba ones, bain ba ratzon, okay? Whether, if you damage someone, you're liable no matter what. It doesn't matter if you intended, you didn't intend. It doesn't matter if you, someone forced you and, you know, threw you off the roof and you smashed their utensils, you know, it doesn't matter. You were forced, it doesn't make a difference. You damage someone's property, you damage, okay, whether you did it willingly or unwillingly. I feel, so, same thing with haval yivim to. Okay, this is going to be a little bit strange. What are all the possible cases here? But what it means is if somebody has relations with, has intercourse with his Yivama, whether he was unwitting about it, okay, what would that be? Well, he thought it was someone else. He didn't think it was his Yivama, okay? How you mess up people. Maybe he didn't know she was his Yivama. Like maybe he wasn't aware of the halacha about his brother dying and he decides to have relations with his brother's wife or something like that. Baby may see whether he was intentional about it now we're going to see, it seems to be the subject is him, but in a minute, we're going to see it's her as well. Because the subject right now is Haba al Yavinto. He's the subject. Bain Ba'ones, we're going to have to figure out what on earth is forced intercourse. Bain Beratzon, or whether he did it willingly. So now, Afilu Hu Shogeg Behimazida, even if she's the one who's unwitting and he's intentional, or Hu Mezid Vihi Shogeg, okay, either possibility. Hu Anus Vihi Lo Anusa, he was forced into it, she was not. Or he anusa the hula anus, or she was forced into it, and he was not. Okay, that's the first section. Echada me'are ve'echada gomer kana. Whether he just began the act of sexual relations or he finished the act. Tomorrow we're gonna have a whole diyun about how do we know ha'ara'a from the Torah? Okay, yes, this is getting a little bit graphic. Um, so in general, this is gonna be quite graphic. But ha'ara'a. So when he starts, okay, he goes inside and ha'gomer finishing the act. Either which way, he's kone. Both he acquires her. The lochi lake bain bi'ala bi'a, no difference whether it's what we've talked about, bi'a kedarka or bi'a shalok kedarka, going in a normal manner or going in through um, anal, anally. So now, the chen haba al kol hamayarot shebe Torah, they're now going to say this concept of me'are, and this concept of um, there's no difference which type of bi'a you're having, they're valid in yibam, yibum, and if you do it with any of your relatives who are forbidden, Either right hara or biashalokadarka, it's also you're going to be liable the death penalty. Okay, so kenabal kol arayotchebetorah. In fact, the whole din of hara you're going to see tomorrow is learned from the arayot and it's adapted from here to it's taken to yibum as well. Opsulot or anyone who's you're disqualified from marrying, like an almanal kohen gadol. Now they're going to list all the psulot, which are basically negative ones, right, as opposed to kareid and the real arayot, which are almanal kohen gadol, a widow to the high priest. A grusha or someone, right? Someone who's divorced or had chalitza to a coin, a regular coin. Mamzer or Nitinal Yisrael, right? A mamzer or a Nitina can't marry a regular Yisrael. A bat Yisrael, a mamzer or Nitina, or a woman can't marry a mamzer or a Nitin. Psala, right? So she'll be disqualified for the kuna from any kind of right sexual encounter. There's no distinction what type. So now I'm going to start with a few small things. We'll end here. My afilu, the first thing is the language of the Mishnah. It said, even if he's shogeg and he's mizida. What, what's that even if? That even if doesn't make any sense. So the Gemara says, lo mebaya kamar. It's a lo mebaya structure, which works like this. Lo mebaya, it doesn't even need to tell you who's shogeg, the hikam achavna lemitzvah. This isn't even mentioned in the Mishnah, but it's almost as if it's saying. Of course, if 
he was unwitting about, but she had intention to fulfill Yibum. Inami, who may see the Kamachavna the mitzvah, or he was intentional about having an, a sexual encounter with her, but not to fulfill the mitzvah, and she was intentional about fulfilling the mitzvah. But even, and here's where the Afilu comes in, El Afilu who shogeg behim zida, even if he's unwitting about the act and she was intentional about the act, but did Travaya lo Kamachavna in the mitzvah, but even if neither one actually was performing to do, was planning to do Yibum, like they didn't know, let's say it was Yibum, okay? You don't even need that. Afilu hachi kana, still is bound. Tani Rabbi Chia, next point. We're going to have three points for today. This is first. Second one is Tani Rabbi Chia. He has a bright about this. We're constantly learning bright that the Rabbi Chia has on Mishnayot. Afilu shnehem shogegim, shnehem zidim, shnehem anusim. Right. Till now, our Mishnah kept saying, he's shogeg. And then it said, well, even if he is and she's not, she's not a he. But now they say, even if both of them are. Okay. Now, so they can both be forced into it and it could still be even. We're going to have to deal with that in a few, and get to that in tomorrow's daf, what that could possibly be. So now they're going to say the following. What on earth is onus? How can you be forced to have a sexual act here? Right? The classic act in the Gemara of onus is, you know, comes a Gentile and he puts a gun to your head and he says, have relations with this woman. Well, okay, if you didn't think the was enough graphic, here goes the real graphic, which is, there's no such thing as onus by erva. Why? There's no way a man can have an act of sexual relations without intent because it just doesn't work that way. So, right? So basically, there's no such thing that he was forced. You can't be forced unless you actually have some part in your intention. So, therefore, that can't be the definition of onus. Ella be ashamed. Maybe he's sleeping. Okay, with some of they think that is more doable. Okay, so we're going to see tomorrow. Hamar of Yehuda, Yashen lo kanabi yifimto. Okay, we'll start with that tomorrow, which is Rabbi Yehuda says, no, that doesn't work as well. And we're going to try to come up with what could be the case of forced onus. Yes, I see your faces. <laughs> Not an easy sigur to handle. Anyway, we'll finish here. It's a sigur that comes up, by the way, in a whole bunch of places. So in all sorts of, uh... anyway, okay, that's it for today. Have a Shabbat Shalom, everyone.